Well, good morning and welcome to Splot Part 2. For those new people uh, to the channel, thank you for coming. And I'm a UK reseller, buy and sell antiques and collectibles to try and make a profit. I buy from flea markets, antique fairs, car boot sales, etc. Car boot sale, we all chuck our stuff in the back of a car, drive off somewhere and try and sell it. Hence the car boot. Today is Splot Part 2. Um, I've already shown you all that beautiful fine silver and jewellery items I purchased in part one. So today is more a work in stock uh, video. I have some nice pieces still, but it is more a work in stock. So, should we get started? I'm gonna start off with one or two of the pieces that I still had from Gary. I gave him a massive shout out in the last video, so um, thank you again. So we're gonna start off with this <coughs> Coldstream Guards Ice Bucket. It's got a beautiful memorial on the front there. It's modelled as a drum. So, not really nice ice bucket. It's in really good, clean condition. It could have a wipe over, obviously, but it's in good condition, no damage to it at all. Um, now, Gary charged me £20 sterling for this, or about $28, $30. Um, that is a steal. I purchased this. Now, when I saw it, my heart skipped a beat. I thought, oh, here we go, Moorcroft. But it's not. This is Old Tupton Way. And Old Tupton Way was created in 2002. It is a little village in Derby. And... It's in the tube line decoration, no doubt it's been inspired by Moorcroft. Um, but believe it or not, this has now got a massive following. And it's got you know over 50 different designs now. This is a charger with, um, I don't know, what are they, tulips? Maybe? With flowers. <laughs> my flowers are as good as my dogs, I have no idea, I'm guessing. But it is a beautiful thing. This owes me... One pound sterling or one and a half dollars. Now, if you Google, let me rephrase that. If you checked on eBay, you'll find the dearest piece of old Tupton we sold is like three and a half hundred pounds. And then the prices come all the way down. I would think a piece along this line is about 45 to 50 pound, 60 to 70 dollars for a piece like this. And it cost me one pound or one and a half dollars. It is a beautiful thing. It's got a massive following and up in value is going. That was a really nice find for a pound. <clears throat> Next piece. As you know, I've been buying things, architectural antiques and collectibles for my garden. Uh, you know, cartwheels, weather vanes and so forth. Well, today we have Buddha. It's a really nice looking Buddha too. <coughs> It is in reconstituted stone, so like a concrete. It's got a pattern all over him, all over his robe. As you can see, I'm struggling with him. He weighs a ton. But you can see he's already got some good age with all this sort of moss and that growing on him. He's a nice thing. Rub him for luck. <coughs> so yeah. That cost me five pounds, seven and a half dollars. And I would say it's probably got 40 or 50 years on there, sitting in somebody's garden. Well, guess what? It's now going into my garden. Oh, and it will be loved. That's heavy. Um, this I quite like. I wish there were more of them. So we have an antique, yeah, it's would antique, early 20th century probably. Bronze door pole, so you've got the door handle, and in enamel across the top it says push. Now I would have loved a pair, but that owes me a fiver. Um, for that fiver, seven and a half dollars, that is seriously collectible. And people do use what singles because they might do decorate one room and the other side of the door is a different room, might be decorated differently. So they will use just singles. 
So that is nice and the enamel is in good condition um, for five pounds, seven and a half dollars. I'm over the moon with that. I would have liked to pay, but uh, a single's good. <coughs> okay, this I had off Gary again. And we have an old enamel sign. Now this, okay, as a sign, isn't very interesting, I suppose. You know, it's got a bit of damage on the corner there. It's just an enamel sign. However, when you read the back, from the demolished Britain's factory, Black Horse Road, Walth Walthamstow, in 1998. Now, the fact this come from the actual building, the Britain's building, really made me think, yes, I want that. And... Yes, that could have been made up by anybody, but in all honesty, for £20 or $30, you'd pay that for it anyway. So why invent the story? And the story is written in paint or enamel. Um, you know, so I'm happy enough with the provenance on the back of this, to be totally honest too. And I like the sign, so that's a website piece for definite. The sign... And the ice bucket are both good enough to go on the website, as is the old Tupton way. I think the rest of the pieces are going to be shop stock. I have a carry bag full of Royal Albert Old Country Roses. So we'll start off, we have a large bowl. It's got this moulding around the top here. It's got the 1964, I think, on, 1960s back stamp anyway. Um, so we have the one large bowl. I have another large bowl, again with the same moulding and everything. So that's two large bowls. As you can see, I'm still unpacking it. I've done nothing with it since purchasing it. Bank holiday Monday and I would normally be up in Malvin. Uh, but I've had the baby all weekend. Uh, I managed to go by in Saturday. We went to um, a community farm yesterday where my daughter got to pet all the animals and go on rides and things like that. She absolutely adored that. So I thought today I'm going to come down, make my videos and tidy the shop up ready for this week's trade. Anyway, I had set of six smaller bowls. Now this stuff is not going to go into the shop. I've got a buyer for all my Royal Albert. Um, I do a fair price. He comes down, he doesn't quibble, he takes it. So these will be put away for you, because uh, I know you're watching. These will be put away for you until I got more. And I'll, once I get up to about £100 worth for you, I will give you a ring to come and collect. But two really nice bowls and a set of six smaller bowls. I'm over the moon with that. <laughs> Do you know how much they cost me? £7 sterling, so $10. So that is less than £1 per piece. Don't ask me how, I'm just uh, lucky that it turns up now and again. Okay, I've got some work in stock, as in little storybook figurines. Now, these used to be seriously collectible. I got three, I'll show you them individually. Uh, they used to pull really good money. You, uh, you'd get them by Beswick, Royal Albert, Royal Dalton and so forth. Now, the ones that used to pull good money had an early gold back stamp. The back stamp makes a massive difference on the value of these figurines. Now, these are all, I believe, by Royal Albert. I know this one is. I think the other two are as well. And they owe me a massive, massive £4 each. £12 sterling for three. They are all Royal Albert. So £12 sterling for three, which is about $17 for three. <clears throat> there was a time where these, you know, even with this back stamp would have been like £30 each, something like that. Now they're going to go out to £12 each, so about $15 each. They're all in good condition, uh, but for £4 each, you know, I'm going to get three to one on my money. I couldn't leave them there. They're nice little sh shelf fillers. As you can see, I all, have all cabinets all the way along, and I put little curios and collectibles that people can walk in off the street. Go, 
oh, I like that, I'll take that. And it's cheap enough that it doesn't matter. That's the way I do run the shop. I use the shop for buying and selling little quirky novelty pieces like so. Talking about quirky and novelty, this pair were found by Sandra. I didn't even see them. She bought them for me to put in the shop. But they are, well, hideous. <laughs> so we have a salt and pepper shaker. And the name is really, really convenient. They are from the Pretty Ugly Pottery Made in Wales. Yeah, I'm not joking now. Pretty Ugly Pottery. <laughs> but they're Welsh. So, they're novelty. And believe it or not, right, I, did, I wouldn't have given these a second glance. Sandra picked them up because she thought they were so ugly and so, so good. Because they were so bad, they were so good. She picked these up and she thought, I'll have them for him. And they cost me £2, so $3 for the pay, which is more than I paid for some sterling silver. <clears throat> However, she, she had a look on eBay while we were sat at the car because we were selling down there Saturday as well. And I'm not kidding you, people are asking £20 for the set, $30 for the set. So, go Sandra, she's actually learning. So thank you, Sandra. I have a pretty ugly novel, uh, crew at set, salt and pepper. Next piece we have is early 20th century. It's blue and white jasper way, as you can see that beautiful applied memorial on the front. Now, people collect memorials or crests, family crests if you like. And this is a particularly nice one. I have no idea who the family is, but it's a really nice crest. Now I would assume this is like a toothpick holder or something like that, or maybe a little spill holder, maybe for matches for lighting your pipe or something like that. It's not a Wedgwood example, it's produced by Adams. So just as good, it's got a full set of marks on the base. It's Adams, made in England, so we know it's after 1910, uh, but I wouldn't think it's much after, looking at the colour of the porcelain and everything. So a nice little thing, it cost me 50 pence, no one dollar for that. It's over 100 year old, or I'd say it's 100 year old, and it's a memorial piece. And memorial pieces in anything sell. You, no matter what you've got, if you've got a Chinese porcelain, you've got a bit of glass, anything, it doesn't matter. If it's got a memorial on it, people want it. 50p. Oh. I'm not even going to guess the breed. We got a couple of, I think that's the Dulux dog, isn't it? The Dulux advert. I think so. We got a couple of dogs. This one is produced by Melrose. And this one is produced by Coopercraft with the label on the foot there. So we have two little dogs in good condition. And I buy all the animals I can get hold of purely because people love animals. When they got one of these dogs, it'll be, oh, that looks like my little dog, and they take it home. They owe me £5 for the pay. And that's the small dog and the large dog, which is about $7.50. And to be honest with you, this one on his own is going to be somewhere between £15 and £20. So about $25 to $30 for a Cooper Craft version of this in the shop. So I'm happy with them. I've got plenty more. It's only work in stock, but I've got loads of it. <coughs> okay, so I have a ginger jar. It's Chinese porcelain. Now the lid doesn't fit over it perfectly, unfortunately. I would have rathered a bigger lid uh, because these bottoms and tops were made in mass and then they just matched the pattern up like so. They weren't always made at the same place. Anyway, this is probably 1960s Chinese hand-painted porcelain ginger jar. It owes me three pounds which is about four and a half dollars, which is a no-brainer to be honest though. Even though it's only sort of 60s, it's still got some age to it. 
and people will still like to buy them. Most of this now is just going to be shelf fillers in the shop. This one actually I like. It's solid brass and it's a dragon. I don't know whether I like it because of the Welsh dragon, I don't know. Uh, but either way, it's a nice solid brass dragon. It cost me £10 sterling or $14. Really is nice. It's a good heavy cast one. This one's actually going up on the website with the others. Um, so it's a nice, I'd say it's about 8 inches long, something like that. Solid brass. Um, it's not a hollow piece, so it's cast. It's nothing special, but you know, it's got to be £25, £30, $45. Got to be for a nice solid brass dragon. I like dragons. <clears throat> this is shop filler. <laughs> it's not an antique by any means, I know. I think it's made of plaster, and we have Old Chief here. It's got one or two little chips somewhere. Where did I see them? And I mean, tiny. Yeah, there. You look just there. You can see those two white chips. Under an eyeglass, it looks to be plaster. It feels almost ceramic, but I'm looking at the chip in there. I'd say it's a plaster model of an Indian chief. It cost me £15 sterling, so about $22, something like that. It's gonna look amazing in the shop window. And it hasn't always gotta be about being antique. I can tell you now, around here, they're gonna, they're gonna like him, and he's probably a double up. No problem at all. And I tell you what, it's heavy. This I actually quite liked, and I actually thought it'd be worth a lot more money than it is. So we have a Staffordshire ceramic paperweight with a map on the top. Now, I haven't cleaned any of this stuff yet, so bear in mind, it's thinking dirty, but there's the mark to the base. Now, I'd never come across it before, and I'm gonna show you, that is what the mark is. Optimigo, if I'm pronouncing that correct, I doubt very much. However, they produced paperweights, trinket boxes, and things like that, um, with charts from the 19th century. So terrestrial and celestial globes, things like that, would all be on the tops. They're a Staffordshire or an English company, and believe it or not, it really is a nice quality thing. And it's got all this ribbon around, almost as if, um, you know, it's off a ship, it's, you know. It's almost like uh, the capstan shape you used to get with the ink wells. It's really nice and it feels gorgeous in the hand. Real nice feel to it. Now I've had a look online. There isn't another one of these ones on there, but there are different patterns. Um, but they don't pull what I would thought. When I saw that, I thought, well, that's gonna be 25, 30 pound of anybody's money. Um, but when I looked online, they're between 10 and 20 pounds or between 15 and 30 dollars which is quite sad to be honest with you. However, it only cost me one pound or one and a half dollars, but I rated it, I actually liked it. It's a good looking piece, it's got a map on there. You know, you put that on a gentleman's desk, once I clean it obviously, you put that on a gentleman's desk, it's gonna look beautiful. I don't know why they're not worth more money. Maybe I might keep that one, because I do actually like it. But we'll see, it'll probably end up for sale. <coughs> Um, I've had a little 1920s Egyptian brass tray. Always, they're always engraved with different uh, scenes. Do you know, thinking about it, it's probably come from the same place that the necklace come from. It was bought off a different stall, but it wouldn't surprise me because a lot of people run around in the morning picking bits up and selling them on. But they charged me a pound, one and a half dollars. It's quite a good looking thing. And looking at the back, it has got age. So, again, it's another shop filler. You know, it'll go out for somewhere between 10 and 20 pounds sterling, something like that. So about 15 to 30 dollars for a nice engraved brass Egyptian plate. 
I was given um, a photograph of nude girls down in Splot, uh, but obviously I can't show you it. For those of you who want to see the <laughs> erotic wallpaper I bought a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't put it in the video. I bought a roll, full roll of 1950s French erotic, so sex scenes then if you like, wallpaper. I've actually listed it now on the website um, with little cuts of paper covering the important parts. So you can actually see what the wallpaper looks like now if you want to go onto the website and have a look <laughs> and have a giggle. Some of the things I buy. Okay, this was my final piece. Um, it's not for, well, I say it's not for resale, I haven't decided yet. It is, look at the state on that. Brand new, sealed, unused label printer. Now, the question is, do I keep it or do I sell it? Because I always write my labels by hand. Um, but this is a label writer, I can write my own labels. Comes with three rolls of labels, comes with uh, everything I need to get up and running. Um, so you've got the print, uh, everything is all in ya. The box is in a mess, but everything is still sealed in the plastic. Now, I've looked at these online and they are quite expensive. This one cost me four pound in splot. <laughs> four pound, um, about eight dollars, seven dollars for a label printer. So I haven't decided yet, do I carry on writing my labels by hand and sell it for a profit, which I know I can make, or do I um, bite the bullet and move up with the times and actually use a printer? I'm probably going to sell it, I don't know yet, but we'll see. I think that is it. I've had a bit of artwork, but I'm going to put that into another film because I've got artwork from previously that I'm going to put in as well um, that's just floating around, so I'll probably do an art video one day. And show you some of the artwork but it's a good mix it's a piece for my house my buddha and i got a few bits uh dotted around so i'll see you soon thanks for watching guys bye for now